which is not relevant to the CT imaging, so we'll disregard those. Uh, there are a few X-rays that don't interact with the body and uh, hit the detector directly. And uh, we do have some uh, attenuation there, which is uh, the measure of how many photons hit the detector in relative uh, uh, with the uh, number of uh, photons that were emitted at the tube. Okay, so uh, so before that, let me take a pointer for you. Like, okay. So you see a graphical representation of the uh, energy spectrum, which is on the x-axis and the atomic number on the y-axis. Uh, there is a two effect that is very important for uh, uh, the CT imaging, right? Uh, that's the Compton effect and the photoelectric effect. The photoelectric effect is primarily a uh, low energy, the, uh, whereas the photo, whereas the Compton effect is uh, independent of uh, uh, the energy levels for that is used in the CT. Uh, but uh, when you look at this uh, graph more carefully, the Compton effect and the photoelectric effect uh, vary as a function as a used energy in the energy spectrum. So uh, the output of this uh, gives us a baseline for a spectral kind of imaging and uh, uh, with the use of them, uh, we can actually see uh, what's inside the voxel not, and not just uh, uh, the density of the voxel, which I'll be uh, explaining you in the further slides. Okay, so as I spoke about the attenuation in the previous slide, attenuation, uh, let me uh, give a brief about what is uh, actually an attenuation and uh, why, we, uh, why is it uh, so important for us. So attenuation is nothing but the beam that, uh, uh, you know, uh, comes out of the X-ray tube and uh, it's going to penetrate through the body. Uh, it's going to, uh, the, where the body has a different kind of all sorts of tissue uh, of a different uh, uh, density and material, and uh, later on the result will be uh, detected on the uh, detector there. So uh, basically we measure all this uh, attenuation value of all the tissues which comes along the uh, path of the beam, and we, uh, we call it as uh, the mu value, right? Uh, but to get a uh, CT kind of image, so uh, we'll have to collect all the projections together, and uh, put it back to their respective uh, uh, groups uh, where we call it as, uh, you know, uh, resolve it uh, as a back projection, okay? And we assign uh, each value uh, into a voxel, okay? So uh, the voxel value is of uh, the mu value what we get at the detector, okay? So now, uh, once we get the, vox, uh, the mu value, uh, we relate this uh, mu value to the water, uh, this is uh, why, because uh, to nullify the uh, technique difference uh, uh, of all the uh, of all the uh, the radiation, and uh, so uh, for example, if you're using uh, the 100 kV and say like uh, the CT ranges from 80 to 140, so the, since we have a lot of a technique difference to nullify that, we uh, relate that to the water, okay? And uh, here. Uh, let me tell you, like, uh, before going to the spectral energy, so uh, there are uh, uh, two uh, important points that you'll have to note it down. So the one is the measure of the HU uh, inside the uh, inside the voxel. So uh, as we see in this figure, there are, uh, the beam passes through many structures and that's, we, re, uh, you know, the reassign it or resolve it to uh, one single projection and uh, thereby we get it. So uh, in this, uh, since the beam passes through all the structures, we are assured that uh, the, each voxel is not of, a, uh, the value is not of a single material, but of an average of all the material that uh, it passes through, right? And the number two is uh, the graph which you see here. Uh, it's uh, the x-axis is uh, of course the photo energy. Say like uh, if you're using a technique of uh, say like 100 kVp, so you have all kind of uh, the monochromatic energy levels or the KEB levels of varying from zero to uh, say like a hundred. Okay, so uh, the B, the peak what you see is uh, just the one third of this uh, energy use. So for example, if in this figure it is shown that it is a hundred KEB, KEB. So the peak of one third is uh, roughly around thirty KEB. That's uh, that's named as a Bremsstrom uh, uh, radiation. So. Uh, 
keeping this in mind, we understand the radiation is uh, uh, is of a polychromatic energy. So there's not uh, there's no uh, there's not only a single energy of uh, of individual tissue, but we instead we have a multi, uh, you know uh, a variety of energy ranges of uh, one particular tissue. So uh, that's when when that is assigned to a voxel. So that uh, will uh, definitely you know. Uh, misinterpret and uh, tell us uh, average value of a uh, uh, average H value of that particular uh, tissue, but no, rather not the uh, uh, the single element inside the tissue. So let's see. Uh, let me put it into a clinical demonstration here of the previous slide. What we see. Uh, this is a renal cyst case. What we have. This is a pre-contrast of the plain study and the post-contrast here. So what we have done is uh, we have measured the HU value of the cyst, which you are able to see here right at the pointer. So uh, the value is around uh, 0.41 HU units. That is roughly around uh, very close to the zero, which is well and good. And uh, post contrast, you see the very high increment of the HU value, uh, uh, like roughly around 10. So uh, this is not... Uh, uh, this shouldn't happen in a renal cyst case. So if at all it is happening, then that should be a tumor instead of a cyst. So why does this change happen here? So uh, what happens here is a post uh, injection of uh, iodine, the cortex of the kidney becomes a high arteriating material kind of. So uh, in other words, it becomes a be, uh, you know a beam filtering. Okay. So when the beam passes through this uh, uh, cortex. Uh, it attenuates some of the beam, and when the beam passes through the cyst, it attenuates. It may attenuate or may not attenuate, and uh, our iterative reconstruction engine, uh, uh, it can be any other uh, engine, it uh, it fails to recognize this particular change inside the tissue or uh, inside the body that's happening. So this kind of an enhancement or the increment, we call it as a pseudo uh, hyperdensity change. So uh, that so. Uh, uh, we shouldn't uh, re really depend upon uh, one particular scan, where, uh, so we'll have to always look on the plane and uh, as well as the contrast. So this is uh, one kind of an example of a renal cyst. On the right, you see a uh, uh, gall uh, uh, gallbladder calculi. So this is uh, a conventional CT, uh, uh, what we use it uh, in, um, in a routine way. So in the gallbladder, we didn't find anything in the conventional CT. But when we did a spectral CT for the same patient, we, see, we saw something dark in this kind of an image and something white in a fat uh, image. So this is a fat image. I'll, I'll let you know how we get this and what happens, how and everything. So uh, in a conventional CT, we tend to miss it uh, uh, very frequently. Where if there is any kind of, uh, you know, uh, if the tissue falls between uh, below the water level, the sensitivity fails to... Uh, the CT sensitivity is very low, so that we miss out the uh, some of the pathology structures like this. And of course, it is same when it comes to the very small lesions in the say, like in the liver, right? So, how do we overcome this? Like, uh, how do we not miss this? So, before that, uh, we need to know few of the in very important points where uh, all the slides are you know uh, are linked with un one another so i urge you not to miss any of the slides and uh, 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 you can carefully go through the slides as well fine so the first important point is the attenuation of a material increases at the lower qv so any given material you see this uh, photon uh, energy at the uh, x axis and the uh, atomic number on the y axis Okay, so for uh, for an example purpose, we have kept uh, uh, water and iodine here. So as the uh, attenuation of the material increases, uh, I mean, uh, as the lower uh, the energy gets lower in the uh, photon energy, the attenuation of these both uh, material increases slightly. Of course, you will not be able to see the water proper, uh, the you know the increment in the water slightly, but there will be an increment. Right, so that's what uh, the first point means, and the higher atomic material shows higher attenuation of the KV. This is very evident from the graph. Uh, you can see that the iodine, of course, everybody knows that the iodine has a high atomic number when compared to water. 
so definitely when going through a lesser kvp it is showing you the uh, higher attenuation okay so the third is the uh, attenuation against the range of energy follow an exponential graph of course it is showing me an exponential graph of the both the materials okay now very, this is the very important point like uh, if we know the attenuation of the material okay say like this is a material if we know this uh, attenuation of a material two energy levels say one in the 80 and uh, one in the 140 then that means we will be able to extrapolate the attenuation at any mono energetic uh, value say like uh, in a spectral city we have the energy difference from uh, uh, varying from 40 keV to 140 keV. So that means if you know the attenuation value of this particular material in 80 kVp as well as 140 kVp, then you will be able to resolve it in the, at any given point of a monoenergetic level. So uh, that is uh, uh, biggest uh, advancement of uh, spectral. This acts as a base, like uh, these are the three things which you'll have to keep in mind Based on this uh, three or four points, uh, we're going to see what all the, uh, you know, advancement that we brought about in a spectral CT. Of course, you can get your automatic number when you do this, uh, uh, you know, uh, extrapolate the attenuation here. Okay. So let's start with a single, uh, simple example to, uh, you know, derive uh, on the process we'll be deriving the principle of the spectral CT. Okay. So we have a material here, say like, uh, namely, we can keep it as an iodine for now. So it's an, uh, we'll keep this as an iodine. And uh, we have an uh, energy which uh, we are going to uh, uh, expose it to this material, say like the energy, keep it as uh, uh, 80 kV, that will do. So after the exposing the beam going to pass through this material and uh, the detected photons will be decollected, right? So we know what is happening in the, we know the incident photon as well as the detected photon here, okay? So uh, the, we also know the intensity of an uh, XA can be measured by IE is equal to I0E uh, raised to uh, minus uh, mu X, right? So uh, in that, particular formula we'll have to um, uh, define the mu there which is I've kept it over here okay and uh, this is the energy one that is uh, signifying uh, the kvp which we gave for example as I told you it is uh, 80 kv for uh, keep it as an example okay so we are going to uh, uh, you know get out the value of this mu here right so we know the uh, rho A and mu A, this is nothing but the linear, uh, linear coefficient of uh, and attenuation and also the density value of that particular material, right? So when we know this, uh, we will be able to easily uh, take out the mu value of this particular material. This is uh, very simple and this is what a basic single energy, if you have a mat uh, one material, say like if you are exposing a tissue which has a one constant material, then this is very easy to derive it. So that's how uh, we derive using a single energy and one material. But in practically, this is not the same, right? In a tissue, we have a different compounds like uh, uh, many other materials in a particular voxel, as I told you in the previous slides. So say like we add up uh, this uh, water inside this voxel. So that is in the white. You can see it's kind of a droplets over there. Okay. Now, I'm using the same single energy here and I'm detecting the same uh, uh, photons over here and the same uh, of, uh, formula arrives again, okay? So we'll have to calculate the mu here again, okay? So uh, again, that is um, mu ray, rho a, there's nothing but the mass attenuation coefficient of that uh, material A, which can be iodine. And um, uh, rho b and mu b, that is mass attenuation coefficient of uh, uh, material uh, two that is water. So we are using only single energy. So I've mentioned it as uh, uh, E1 for now. Now, if you ask me what is the attenuation of the water and what is the attenuation of the iodine to figure out from this equation, then that is really impossible because we know only one uh, known factor and we don't know what is the two other factors over here. So this is relatively impossible to resolve it. Now, 
to make it more simpler, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to follow the principle of dual energy. The dual energy, you know, it is of a two energies, right? So I'm using the same voxel of the same material. I have not changed it. The density of the material is same. The, the compound of the material is same. Okay. One of the voxel of the same material I'm exposing with the E1 and the other with the E2, right? From the previous slide, we got this equation with the energy, the results of energy of uh, E1. And now, since we are exposing it to the, say, like another value of 140 kV, okay, keep it as uh, E2, we got the same kind of uh, equation, okay, so which is, I've named it as a E2. So this is of a lower energy, keep it as a 80 kV, and this is of a higher energy, keep it as a 140 kV. Now, here nothing has changed apart from the energies, which we, uh, the, the incident uh, energy and the detected, uh, uh, the incident photon and the detected photon. We have uh, two solutions here where we know where, what is incident, uh, what we have given to the material. And we'll have to calculate the two amounts here, the proportion of uh, attenuation of two materials in uh, two energy levels, right? So this is very simple. Now the equation has been very simple. Now you can use your basic mathematics to calculate this. Then that is how, this is a principle of how you do a dual energy uh, in relation to, uh, to how to find out the uh, attenuation coefficient of, uh, uh, mass attenuation coefficient of a material. Now, let's see more further what else is possible with these two particular uh, equations, right? When you go for the next slide, like uh, this two particular equations I have borrowed from the previous slide. So uh, let me go up and confirm with you. Like uh, this A is, uh, as I told you, is of uh, iron and B is of uh, water. So just this A and B alphabets have changed it to uh, uh, an easy equation as I and W. That's it, nothing else. So uh, how do I derive this? Now, we can, now since we know the attenuation of uh, one material in the, in the voxel, so how about uh, suppressing one material and showing up the others? For example, since we know the two energy levels of what we have uh, given as the incident photon for, uh, material, uh, for the voxel, say like I want to uh, uh, suppress the uh, iron here and show what is the contribution or the uh, attenuation value of that uh, particular uh, uh, water. So using that, we can, uh, you know, uh, generate uh, a material-based uh, uh, images, right? So how do I do that? I am using the first equation as it is. Here, if you see that in, from the equation, I am trying to, uh, uh, you know, take off the concentration of the iodine here. So how do I am doing it? I am making the iodine concentration as zero, right? So why do, how do I make it as a zero? Because I know the uh, at, uh, the, uh, the attenuation value of iodine right from 40 kV to 140 keV, right? So when I know the differences of uh, each kV, when I can interpolate with the differences and the values of the iodine there, so what I do is, since this is a known equation for me, I'm trying to make it as a zero and suppress it, so the remaining equation will be of a water and thereby I use this equation to generate something called as a water density image. Okay, so in the same way, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, you know, make the water value as uh, zero, thereby I get the result as a uh, iodine density or the iodine based image. Okay. This can be done uh, kind of in any known material. If you know the, uh, uh, the molecular uh, value of uh, a particular tissue, you can always use that tissue of, uh, uh, you know, you can suppress the other material and uh, you can bring out the uh, uh, different material, uh, you know, uh, that particular material which you want to see it, right? So this is about the physics. I hope you all got the equation better. And uh, you'll still understand, if you find any kind of a difficulty understanding this equation, we do have a clinical, uh, you know, uh, examples further in the slides where that will bring out, uh, uh, you know, clear out all your confusions there. Okay, so what do we need uh, to produce a spectral image? 
So there are three components. Okay, so one is the hardware. Uh, mainly, I stress on the detector. I'll tell you why. And of course, we need uh, the, the tube as well. And the technique, because uh, I'll show, uh, we have a different kind of approaches of obtaining a spectral CT. Uh, that it is of, uh, uh, on the user to decide which is better. So uh, I'm going to split up all the approaches which we have uh, currently in the market, and uh, uh, I'm going to explain you like uh, simplify it in a mean way that uh, you'll understand it better. And we do have a software uh, where the reconstruction and the post-processing capabilities uh, that should be possible by the software. Because uh, spectral imaging is uh, not just one data, but uh, we are acquiring uh, uh, data in, um, uh, in a different, uh, you know, the multi-energic levels. So uh, we need our system to handle that and uh, uh, enable us to process that in case. Okay. So before moving into that, uh, the very basic uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, definition that you'll have to keep in, uh, keep in mind is that uh, we saw from the previous examples, we saw the values of uh, uh, the results of what we get uh, when you expose to 80 and what we get uh, the result of uh, uh, 140 kvp, right? So both this uh, energy projections should be completely matched with each other. If at all there is any kind of a misregistration in these two uh, levels, then uh, uh, it will be impossible for you to derive uh, spectral-based images. Okay, this is uh, the article which is uh, published by Mars. You can see uh, the photos there. And uh, this is a very basic uh, and uh, a very strong principle to be that has to be followed. Okay. As I was telling you, uh, the, we have a different approaches of do, uh, you know obtaining the dual energy uh, in the market today. Okay, and the below figures, what you see here are the kind of uh, the approaches we have, and I've included the the G uh, dedicated uh, uh, technique what we follow it here. Uh, I'll explain you as we go through it. So the first and foremost, the first innovation was done with, uh, by. Uh, the, is called as uh, dual source uh, dual energy CT. In this technique, we have uh, two tubes, okay, and uh, two detectors here, where the tubes are. Uh, the, uh, it's 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 a it's a it's a published uh, white paper. So it states that uh, they'll have to uh, place it around uh, you know separately around the angle of 90 degree. It can be more like roughly around 90 to 100 degree, I believe. So uh, the green signal uh, the green exposure from the tube is say like uh, it is a lower kv and the blue is uh, for higher kv so it has to uh, rotate along simultaneously together okay and this is a technique of uh, dual source uh, dual energy ct uh, let's uh, let's move to the further one okay what happens in uh, the, we do have a single source uh, dual energy ct uh, it's kind of a dual energy CT. I'll tell you why. Because uh, this can be done in uh, routine uh, uh, G emissions, but uh, given that uh, we have uh, uh, the software to process it, right? So uh, one run is taken in the 80 kV at the area of interest wherever you need it, and the other run is taken at the 140 kV, and thereby we, uh, you know, resolve the uh, using a ratio and uh, quantify uh, uh, the material of, uh, you know. Uh, of, uh, if you want to quantify material that we be done with outcome of a ratio, right? And then there is something called as a single source uh, twin beam uh, dual energy CT. Uh, this is uh, a different concept again here. So what they have done is uh, they use the same beam at uh, the tube end here, but uh, they use uh, uh, two strong filters over here. So one is made up of the gold and other is uh, the tin, right? So uh, tin is uh, high atomic material when compared to the gold. So uh, the lower energies of uh, green and higher of, uh, uh, you know, where it is of uh, blue. Okay. So uh, the tube and the detector are going to uh, rotate around the patient very slowly. Okay. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll discuss about uh, what will be the pros and cons of this kind of approaches in the further slides. Great. Now we have uh, something... Uh, called as a dual uh, layer, uh, dual energy CT. Now, what these guys have done is uh, uh, 
uh, we have a single source uh, tube over here, right? And uh, they have made a changes in the dual la uh, layer, like uh, the uh, the detective has a two layer, uh, where the topmost layer is a vitreum and uh, the bottom is a gado. So, uh, in their theory that the lower energy gets attenuated, say like the 80 kV uh, based, uh, kVp based uh, energies will be attenuated at the topmost layer and the higher kvp uh, techniques uh, energy is going to get uh, attenuated at the bottom layer uh, which is uh, which is highly not possible but uh, this is one of the technique uh, which we we have in the market and now we have a most trusted and reliable kind of a source because uh, it's of a ge this is what a unique feature we follow okay and none of the vendors are, uh, we have it in the market right now. So what is so special about this technology? Let me explain you very briefly. Uh, first of all, we brought up a change in the detector. Okay. So all these detectors so far you have seen is uh, made up of a gadolinium. Okay. But we use something called as a gemstone spectral uh, uh, gemstone detector. Right. Uh, it has a high spatial uh, uh, resolution. And uh, it has very low afterglow, or instead I can tell you it has a zero afterglow, which is very, very, very kind of uh, important. I do have a few other points in the coming slides to explain you. And now coming to the uh, tube, uh, the tube invariably switches to, you know, uh, quickly switches from one energy, say like from 80 to uh, 140 kVp in... Uh, 0.25 milliseconds. That is a very, 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 very short duration where uh, you can just assume it how fast the uh, 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 switching technique has been. Like, uh, if you're, if at all, if you put a, a second, the one second is a thousand milliseconds. So 0.25 is kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's not even a blink of an eye. Okay. So uh, a little of a pros and cons of uh, previous approaches, what we see here in the dual energy CT, since the tube has to go to the 90 degree, they like uh, uh, one projection is taken at the uh, projection is taken at the 80 kV for the same projection to get irradiated from the other tube, uh, which is placed on the relatively uh, 90. Uh, then the angle between them, as I told you, it's uh, about uh, 90 to 100, that even though with the faster rotation type, that is around, uh, it takes around a delay of uh, 70 milliseconds, right? So uh, that is, so uh, if uh, if at all, if there is any structure that is, uh, you know, uh, uh, that which has an involuntary movement uh, and it is moving between, uh, you know, uh, uh, between the 70 milliseconds, then you will not be able to uh, generate a spectral imaging, spectral imaging of that particular uh, uh, organ or the tissue. So, which is the organ that is kind of moving, that is the heart. So, dual source ECT will not be able to perform a myocardial or perfusion or the gemstone or the spectral imaging of a heart. Okay? That's the basic thing. Single source CT, as I told you, uh, one rotation has to be taken, uh, you know, one complete scan has to be taken in the AD, and then again you have to go with the uh, 140. We use it for a stone characterization based on the um, uh, ratio which we obtain it. Now, coming for the single source twin beam technology, so the, since the beam is split into two, say like a beam A is exposed to a, a tissue A. Now, if the beam B wants to uh, come back and expose to the tissue A again, so it has to go to a one full complete uh, rotation. So even with the fastest rotation team, uh, time, uh, that will take you around 140 milliseconds. So uh, there's no kind of, uh, you know, uh, 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 there's nothing to be said about the cardiacs or anything. So uh, we, there is, there are chances of getting a high misregistration uh, mis misregist mis of the data. Now, coming to the dual energy, uh, uh, dual la layer, dual energy CT. So uh, this is uh, this is one of kind of a unique technology which they have brought up in the market. And uh, since there's an overlap of these two detectors. Uh, as I told you, the lower energy and the higher energy over. Uh, the main problem here is uh, 
the energy separation as i told you the energy separation is very very vital in uh, when you go when you think of a spectral energy uh, uh, images right so when you are unable to do the energy separations of lower kv and higher kv uh, in this kind of a detector or in this kind of uh, technology then uh, there will be a lot of uh, you know you will encounter problems with the material uh, uh, you know decomposition or the uh, separations right now coming for the single source uh, fast kv switching so what happens here is uh, the, as i told you uh, the fast kv switching enables us uh, it happens at 0.25 seconds which is uh, nearly to the zero so this will help you to do a, a cardiac scan of course with the whole body scan with the gsi uh, applied on it okay and the one th uh, we have the widest uh, detector in the market that is of a 16 cm no other vendors have it and we can perform the scan gsi the spectral imaging in a complete 50 cm fov right so that is what we have and the most important thing in a single source fast KV switching is dose neutrality. We are not increasing the dose whatsoever when you compare to the all other tech approaches uh, which we, we saw it, right? Whatever the dose which we use it in the con convention CT, it's going to be the same when you switch to a, a, a GSM mode, right? Uh, of course, with a huge data handling, of course, I told you there's going to be a huge energy of the value. But even this is simplified with our uh, uh, servers. We do have a GE has a dedicated server which can ha uh, you know handle a high uh, volume of our data, right? Okay. So as I speak about the GE fast KV uh, <coughs> switching capabilities, the video which is uh, uh, running on the screen, which you are seeing, is how the fast KV switching happens. So there is a multiple times the, uh, the tube switches multiple times from 80 kV to 140 kV in one single rotation. That is uh, the delay of this to, as I told you, is uh, 0.25 milliseconds. And uh, now this is what is explained. We have, uh, we get the interleaved high and low projections uh, in a helical acquisition and thereby it will help you, uh, you know, uh, since we since we are so fast in acquiring, there is no kind of an extra dose for the patient, and the scan time, most importantly, remains the same. There is no increase of a scan time. There is no increase of a uh, radiation dose to the patient. As I told you, the spectral uh, detector has a high spatial resolution. One of the uh, that uh, you know uh, the game changer of uh, this kind of technology in uh, G. Okay, and it is very f extremely fast in uh, acquisition. As I told you, since uh, we use uh, 80 and 140 as a fast KV switching, so we really need a you know uh, capability. The detector has to be uh, capable of acquiring it in a very fast uh, amount of time, and the scintillation is very quick. Okay. To do that, we have a very short after glow, or you can see a zero after glow in the detector. Okay, so we do have uh, 70 plus sites, and now it's crossed somewhere. Uh, I'm not quite exactly sure about the number of sites, but it is crossed to a relative one quarter of whatever the number mission, uh, mentioned in this. We have a lot of publications, we have approved clinical data, which you will be seeing uh, later in the slides. Okay, so unique, uh, we do have uh, some of the features like the unique monochromatic imaging. I'll tell you what happens and metal artifact detection capabilities also with the help of this. Okay, again, back to the timeline of uh, different approaches. Here it will clearly show you and uh, put you a graphical representation of how it is going up here. Uh, comparative to all the approaches uh, which is mentioned here, on the, you see the timeline mentioned here from zero to 500 milliseconds. Dual layer, dual layer detector and the point, uh, fast KV switching, which is from the GE, is very close to the uh, zero milliseconds. Of course, 0.25 is uh, it's it's very very it's, it can be considered as a zero. But as I told you, the problem with the dual energy uh, detector it might encounter uh, you know uh, encounter a, a misregistration in the low and uh, high KVP values, right? 
So dual and is dual source uh, technology, as I told you, it's uh, somewhere close to 70 milliseconds and the cardiac artery falls between uh, inside that. So uh, uh, they might be able to do the dual energy for the rest of the body, but not uh, cardiac. Uh, cardiac is possible only uh, with uh, the GE-capable uh, fast KV switching method and no other vendor have uh, uh, cardiac GSA, as I told you before. Let's split beam. Again, it's over 140 seconds. Uh, pulsar time can be okay, but uh, rotate, rotate is very far away. It's more than 500 milliseconds. Okay. To conclude, we need to have a perfectly uh, registered energy data of two energies. Okay. That will, uh, you know, enable us to get uh, far <coughs> GSA-based images and to minimize the uh, uh, motion artifacts. Right. Again, back to the uh, fast KV switching, I'll just briefly tell you since uh, this is what I was telling you all this time. Uh, with the picture, it will be better uh, for you to understand. So what we do is uh, uh, we scan the patient, just like a conventional CT, there's nothing to, for you to change or uh, change in the uh, something we do extraordinary with that. So uh, we get a data, which is uh, interleaved of high and low projections. As we split up the data, right? So the high KVP projection used as uh, conventional CT images and the combination of this interleaved uh, and high and low projections, we use it as a material density. Material density you saw from the equation how I did it. If I know the material density of one, I suppress with the other, okay, to just to uh, step back and make you understand. So that is how what I'm doing here from the equation. Okay, this, this is where the equation plays a vital role. I get the iron projections and the water-based projections as well. With the help of this, of course, uh, I showed you in the graph also, the attenuation increases with the, all the materials at the lower KV. So that's what uh, uh, we will be able to manipulate from the lower KV to higher KV values. So that is what is a monochromatic uh, Im images. And this is a suppression um, projection images. And this is what the monotechnology. KEV or the monochromatic uh, energy level images. All right. So once we get the data from the uh, <clears throat> from the detector, uh, we uh, call it as a spectral based images. So using that spectral based images, we can derive as the following: what you see here. One is a monochromatic energy. Okay, as I told you, you can invariably uh, slide the values from 40 keV to the 140 keV, okay, and uh, you, of course, you'll see the benefits in the clinical area, how we do it, right? So, you will get a virtual unenhanced images or virtual non-contrast, uh, okay? You don't have to do a uh, plain study for the patient. We'll see how it is, how effective is it in, from in the GE. You get a material density-based images, as I told you, again, go back to uh, step back to the equation which I told you earlier. I add in water if you know uh, uh, different components. I'll show you, I have a few examples I'll show you. Uh, if you know a different material, you can suppress that and show up the other material. Using a monochromatic, or uh, we do have a special uh, metal artifact detection as well. Okay. Of course, effective Z is nothing but the autopic number. As I told you, if you are able to do all these things and effective Z comes along with that and you will be able to uh, derive the atomic number of the material which you desire. So I do have a clinical images of all this mentioned below. Let's quickly go through it. I know you're waiting for that. Okay, so firstly, let's see what is the material of monochromatic images. Okay, how is that helpful for you? First, uh, let's look at the benefits here. <laughs> of course, uh, it helps in the contrast, uh, contrast enhancement at the lower energy. I told you, just remember that graph again. Okay, as we uh, go back at the lower energy levels, the iodine was at the peak. The same thing we're gonna apply it over here. Improvise CNR contrast to noise ratio with the small lesion. For example, if you're not able to see a lesion in one particular KEV, you can always, uh, uh, you know, slide it uh, to, to and fro, like uh, increasing or a decreasing pattern to, of course, uh, iodine enhances at the lower energy uh, uh, KEV patterns of photo energy. So uh, that will that is also possible. Using high KV will reduce the beam hardening effect, especially at the posterior force of the brain. I had to, I do have a clinical image for that. 
tissue de uh, dependent monochromatic energy selection uh, that is of a user control i should say and uh, you will be authorized to set up your own image quality based on this monochromatic images okay so these are the quite a few benefits which you have in the monochromatic images let's see in the below image like what happens here so once the uh, gsi spectral imaging is taken so what we have done is uh, we have converted into a monoelectric energy, uh, monochromatic energies. Okay, so we have all the bases here. Of course, you can switch it to, we have put it in multiples of 20 here, 40, 60, 80, 100, and 140. But still, you can choose your own. Uh, if you want a 50, you can do that. If you want 70, you can do that. All these values are good. To, to show you a vast dis uh, difference, I've done this. So let's speak about this 80 kV you see some of the peak energy or the or the good enhancement of the uh, iota there this is a contrast study where i decrease the kev in this particular monochromatic image i can see the even more better enhancement of the iron in here again take uh, just think about the graph and apply it here right so when i go with the further increment of the kev I lose that enhancement of that, right? So uh, this is uh, this will give you a low contrast and very less noise. Of course, if you are going for, uh, if you want to, you know, enhance the lesion with contrast better, of course, you have to go with the lower KV, thereby you might slightly increase the noise levels there, but that is really acceptable because uh, I'll show you clinical images how uh, uh, the lower KV potentially plays a vital role. Right. Great. Now, these two images, what you see, it is the itogram, definitely. And uh, I should say this is done in a, uh, a very low, low, low contrast, which is of which is mentioned down below. It is uh, 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 the 20 cc contrast. Okay. This is actually done in Japan. I've just put uh, put uh, you know uh, put this for your reference here. Okay. The first image which you saw, uh, see here, right at my pointer, is uh, a co conventional KVP image, right, which was done, okay. Now, I used this conventional KVP image and converted this into a monoenergetic image. At the KV, KV, KEV level of 40, I see a better enhancement, as I told you, right. This is nothing but this kind of an image, what you're seeing here. I've rebuilt this 40 KV kind of an image. Of course, the cases are different, but this kind of enhancement will give a replica or you can derive the volume rendering into this kind of image, right? So the the biggest biggest advantage of using a monochromatic image is nothing but you, you, you tend to use a very low contrast of the volume, a uh, contrast volume, and that will help the patient, okay? And since we are using a monochromatic, of course, we have, uh, we have a high quality detector, which will allow you to use uh, uh, lesser dose when you compare to the normal, right? So this monochromatic, as I told you, it will help you uh, in visualizing the vas uh, vascular structures very clearly, even despite if you give a low amount of contrast. This is again, uh, uh, the few, quite a few images are taken from the previous uh, artogram. Uh, this, as I told you, this is done at uh, uh, this is a different kind of uh, done at 120 kvp, right? Uh, uh, so the, you can see the iodine enhancement here, how uh, how low it is. But when you switch up to the mono energetic level uh, at the 40 kv uh, kv, you see a better visualization of the vascular structures over it, right? Okay, so I was talking about the vascular structure. Let's see about the lesions now here. Okay, so this particular patient has uh, a lesion in the liver. Okay, so we have done uh, <clears throat> conventional CT, which is uh, roughly around 120 or 100 kvp, which we use it routinely. Okay, so in the routine conventional CT, you fail to visualize the enhancement over here. Of course, there's nothing was here. So, when we put it in a monochromatic uh, uh, viewer, or uh, just converted this KVP into monochromatic uh, uh, in KV technique, at 50 KVV of the same study, arterial study, we tend to see the enhancement of uh, uh, iodine over here, right? To further simplify it, 
to make it a better visualization, what I did was a material decomposition, as I told you in the earlier equations. So I used the same Im image and I suppress the other materials, for example, water. So I see only iodine here. So it, you, you are able to see the iodine uh, enhancement even more better here, right? So this is again a portal phase. You are slightly able to visualize it in the next run, right? Okay, this is a virtual unenhanced scan or the virtual non-contrast scan, which we have derived using the contrast scan here. I'll tell you with the, I'll, I have a quite a few examples, very beautiful examples in the further slides. I'll let you know with that, right? Now, we have this iodine based image. We have just put a overlay, color overlay for a clinician to better understand it. Okay, with the color changes in this particular lesion, you can decide what is the enhancement level of this particular lesion using the iodine density over here, right? This is one of the examples. And uh, there's another example. Suppose if you have even more smaller uh, uh, lesions, okay? So how do we do that? Okay, so this patient, uh, we did an arterial phase, uh, 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 you know, conventional CT at, uh, I think it's around 140 kVp. Okay, uh, so we were not able to diagnose uh, or visualize any lesions over here, right? So, when we immediately switched this uh, to the monochromatic image, we were able to see some changes over here. We were able to better visualize the lesions, the very, very tiny lesions, which we missed up in the normal KVP conventional images. So this is a for 140 KV normal arterial phase, where uh, of course uh, there is nothing much to be seen there. Uh, when I reduce the KV to 50 from 140, yeah, I tend to see something over there. Okay, so further I suppress the water. The bracket, what you see is the suppressed uh, material. And also the bracket, bracket you see the material based image there. Okay, so here in this image I'm uh, viewing the iodine when after suppressing the water, right? So I see the uh, enhancement over there. And further below the cuts shows us uh, the same result over here, uh, 50 keV and uh, the uh, the uh, images of the lesions over here. The same, uh, in, uh, I've suppressed the uh, uh, water in this particular image to visualize it more better. So all this minute, tiny kind of uh, lesions will never be missed uh, if at all if you're using a spectral-based image. That's a very big advantage of uh, using a spectral CT. Now, as I was talking about the another benefit of using a poly, uh, monochromatic uh, images is uh, to reduction of the uh, <clears throat> posterior fossa beam artifact, right? So this is a normal curve for 140. Everybody in the industry, uh, the technicians, all you guys might have experienced this uh, kind of a posterior fossa artifact reduction, right? uh, I mean the artifact on the conventional CT. This can be reduced without exposing the patient again, just by changing it to a mono KV, KEV technique, right? Just fluctuate, to use the slider to ranging or energy levels ranging from 40 to 140. Thereby, you will definitely see a change that will, which will eradicate uh, uh, the posterior fossa, the beam hardening artifacts in particular in case, yeah. Okay, that's about the monochromatic images. Uh, we'll switch uh, quickly, jump to the next advantage of a spectral layer spaced imaging, the virtual non-contrast image. Why is this so important? We have, uh, uh, before I show up, uh, for, uh, talk about this and show you clinically what happens, let me give a brief introduction, right? right? So virtual non-contrast images are not uh, just a water-based image where we suppress iodine and show. That is not the one, right? D uses a unique algorithm which plays not with the material based or uh, image based uh, uh, reconstruction, but uh, we, we make use of the raw data which we acquired it, right? So what will happen is we suppress the iodine from the image, thereby eliminating all the iodine uh, uh, attenuation there and thereby uh, get up only the images without the iodine concentration. Let me prove you like, okay, so this is a particular, uh, this is actually a case which we have done it. 
So generally, what happens in the vendors like uh, like outside the world, like uh, if you uh, apart from the GE, what happens? I'll put it in an elaborate way for this. Now, this is a hundred kvp conventional CT which we have taken. This is an absolute plane study, right? You can you can see the marked circles over here. The KV is nothing but the polychromatic or the conventional CT image what we have done, right? Now. What I've done is to prove a point like how efficient is the virtual non-contrast algorithm in GE, I've taken a, a region of interest on the liver area. I've taken, uh, you know, the, the values of uh, uh, that particular area in the average here, which is of uh, 51.7. That's what it's showing me right now. Okay. Now, there are other images which can manipulate you Telling that it is a uh, you know virtual non-contrast image, but it is not. I'll tell you why. Now this is a contrast image. Okay, in the circle you see you are able to see a water image, right? Suppressing the iodine. That's what even in the previous slides I told you, right? Now this the appearance of this image will show you as a plain image, but this is actually not a virtual non-contrast image because when I measure the uh, our, uh, you know, uh, HU of this particular area with the same uh, uh, circumference, I get a different value, which is vastly away from the uh, uh, conventional CT. The value is uh, vastly different. So this can't be a conventional uh, uh, virtual non-contrast image, right? Now, when I use the same image here, right? I used a material suppressed technique, which is a unique algorithm where GE, only uh, GE has this, no other vendor has this. So when I do the material suppression here, where thereby I remove all the iodine in this image, you see the average value, it is equal to what we measured in the conventional CT of 100 kvp to that virtual non-contrast image, right? This is a contrast image where we have suppressed iodine, okay, mm -hmm. and thereby we get a virtual non-contrast GSI material suppressed iodine image, right? So this is the vast difference which uh, you'll have to be very careful in knowing what is uh, actually a virtual non-contrast image and what is not. Uh, there's another example for you over here, right? So as I told you, the GSA MSA is a unique GE algorithm which works on a raw data space to create a material iodine suppressed image, right? Okay, this is, as I told you, this is uh, uh, very different from the image-based image, which is where I've showed you the water image suppressing the iodine, right? This is another few examples where I missed, uh, uh, this is uh, kind of uh, conventional CT in the coronal projection, which you are going to see here. Uh, we have mentioned, uh, you know, measure the HU over there, and that's around as 36.9. And this is a GSA MSI image or the virtual non contrast, a pure uh, uh, raw data based virtual non contrast image, which is almost matching the uh, HU values of the plain conventional CT. So, this is the huge uh, turnover. Of, uh, again, I would say this is another game changer in the spectral imaging of uh, as far as the GE concerned. Right. Two more examples for you. The top row shows you the iodine-based image, and the bottom row shows you uh, the virtual non-contrast or the MSI-based image. And uh, of course, you can see the image courtesy. This is uh, taken out from the uh, Delhi Mahajan imaging. Okay. So that's about uh, we uh, went through uh, monochromatic, and we saw what happens in the virtual non-contrast. Now let's see what happens in the material decomposition. As I told you, let me take a step back and uh, tell you again. Uh, we got two energy levels of, uh, you know, uh, 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 two composition of uh, attenuation material of two material with uh, when we expose them to two different kind of uh, energies, right? So thereby, I told you, in a, I gave in an example where I can suppress uh, iodine and show water based, or uh, or the vice versa, where I can show the water image uh, suppressing the iodine. In the same way, uh, you can suppress any known material, okay? For example, uh, we do have a presets of uh, materials which uh, shows you, like for example, the bone, blood, fat, calcium, muscle, iodine, iron, and of course the water and uh, the uric acid. You can suppress one image 
and show up the other, uh, which is the which is very relevant to the particular uh, case you are referring to. These are the few quite of uh, examples which you are seeing it here. Uh, to tell you again, the brackets what you see is the suppressed element or the suppressed material, and outside the bracket what you see is that material based image in the uh, for your uh, on your screen. Okay, so uh, let me tell you, like, uh, let me give an example of a material uh, <clears throat> suppressed image. Uh, so this case is uh, uh, it's a CAT procedure. This patient, uh, this particular patient has a, had a ischemic stroke where his uh, right MCA was completely occluded, right? Uh, we, do, uh, we did notice some of the hyperdensity uh, uh, changes in the brain, in the right side of the brain. Okay, so the procedure was done. Everything went well. Uh, the, those are the images which you are seeing uh, right up my uh, cursor. It was done. It's an interventional study, of course. It is done in the CAT. Uh, of, of course, we all know where in the CAT lab we use a high volume of iodine there, right? So uh, once the procedure was done, the, bro the patient was bro brought back to the uh, scan department for, uh, you know, for uh, uh, post uh, uh, to visualize any post changes. So the scan was performed after six hours, okay, in the GSI mode, where we again visualize the same, uh, something kind of a hyperdensity at the at the level of basal ganglia. Now, we had a confusion whether it's, uh, is it a residual uh, iodine because of the interventional study we had, or because of the high volume of iodine that were injected, or is it a hemorrhage? Right. So what we simply did is, of course, you might have an idea right now what we have, we would have done it. We simply suppress the iodine from this image. Okay. So when we suppress the iodine, the hyperdensity area simply vanished. I mean, in, the, in, the, in the other way, you can see it was suppressed. So this proves it was not a hemorrhage, but uh, the iodine uh, uh, residue after the procedure. Right. This is uh, one of the clinical. Uh, uh, <clears throat> examples uh, or the outcome which you can see it here. Okay, so uh, three was done and the material decomposition, one of the examples you saw it. Let's see what is uh, helpful, uh, no, how uh, effective the, uh, the atomic number calculation plays a vital role. Right, this is a renal calculi uh, uh, case. Okay, we had a renal stone here. So if you want to quantify or characterize what kind of a stone over here, you just have to do it in a gemstone uh, spectral imaging mode, GSI mode. Uh, once the data has been acquired, put it into a GSI viewer, which uh, dedicated software we have. Okay, all you'll have to do is put a cursor, or put a ROI on the on the on the stone. Okay, we have a preset value of all the stones. Okay, which is already loaded in the machine. So the moment when you put the uh, ROA there on the stone particular, so this is on the blue color which you see, the light blue, the sky blue, okay? So all the values referring to this uh, ROA, the blocks are uh, represented on the graph over here, the histogram, right? So uh, what happens here, we have a different atomic number uh, based on the, uh, uh, the you know, uh, the pic uh, pixel values. So uh, the block is, uh, these blocks are very close to this particular red line, right? This is one of the values of uh, stone. So if you see it below here, uh, the color clearly shows that the red is nothing but the blue shade, right? This is a very, very clean, uh, simple procedure to characterize the stone. You just have to place the cursor and see which is uh, very close to that particular uh, uh, material and uh, that will give uh, full uh, confidence of uh, defining what kind of uh, uh, stone is that. And that will help you for, uh, you know, if you want, if the patient has to undergo any kind of uh, uh, surgery in the process of uh, removal of the stone. Okay, so here there's another case of uh, effective zero. I'll tell you how to, there's a multiple uh, uh, techniques which is applied over here. Uh, we saw a kind of a lesion on the left uh, kidney area, okay, in this particular patient. So we did a single phase of contrast acquisition in the GSM mode. Okay, so when we observed in the low monochromatic uh, energy levels, 
uh, we tend to see there was no kind of any kind of a vascular supply on this particular uh, lesion, right? So that means uh, uh, we can say that uh, this is not a tumor, enhancing tumor, but uh, maybe uh, you know uh, uh, maybe we might have a confusion whether it is kind of a late enhancement. Uh, which might de detect as a renal cell carcinoma, or is it just a renal abscess? So how do we, how did we differentiate it? Uh, it's very simple. So we did use a iodine map uh, to uh, see whether uh, if it is enhancing or not. And later we started using a spectral curve, as you see in the image, the graphical representation here. We tend to keep all the ROAs as we did in the <clears throat> uh, renal stones. Right, so one of the cortex, okay, so uh, one of the wall of the abscess, okay, and uh, one of the uh, one at the center of the abscess where the color uh, indicates the curves of the map. Okay? So when you visualize the spectral curve, it is clearly noted that this is uh, abscess. Okay, the, this is nothing but a pseudo enhancement of the uh, center of the abscess. That's it. So this is one of the keys we had. And of course, with the same data, this is a monochromatic, auto, whatever I told you, we started visualizing it to check whether there is any vasculature supply of uh, to the particular lesion. So nothing showed up in 55 kV, nothing happened in the 40 kV, and of course, in the MD uh, material uh, decomposition ID image as well. Okay, so there's another example of the stone again, which is uh, in the gallbladder. To check whether uh, what kind of a stone is this, of course we have uh, mostly the, uh, the, the f f uh, sometimes we tend to get a lot of uh, cholesterol stones over here. So as I did in the suppression earlier, as I was talking about a higher iodine suppressed water based image or the water suppressed iodine based image, the same technique has been applied here for the material density uh, decomposition imaging where I'm, where I'm showing you a fat based image where suppressing the water here. The simple technique again is used here. We place a cursor with the use of uh, uh, the atomic number in the histogram as well as the spectral curve. You can see the curve falling uh, down with respect to the lower energy KV. So this will uh, uh, simply signifies the evidence of uh, cholesterol calculus uh, in the gallbladder. Okay, so uh, we have, uh, this is a case of uh, pulmonary embolism. So uh, that's, that's the reason that all the pulmonary arteries are uh, <clears throat> enhanced here. So routinely in the pulmonary uh, uh, angiography, we tend to see the filling defect of the arteries, right? So that's what we do with in, uh, GSN in all the routine studies, uh, but here, uh, we tend to get, um, you know, we, we also can quantify the uh, lung parenchyma, uh, which has been non perfused due to the, uh, uh, the clot, right? Uh, so how do I do that? It's just nothing but uh, these are the MIP images which you're seeing with the low KV, uh, um, KV, uh, KV images where better visualization of, uh, um, you know, uh, the arteries here. And this is, of course, a conventional CT. This is an iodine-based uh, image where the water has been suppressed. And here in the color overlay of a map where you can clearly visualize the parenchyma being, uh, you know, uh, the, there's a perf uh, the, the non-perfused area, or you can see a perfusion defect area there where you can easily quantify this uh, volume, uh, parenchyma volume, and uh, you, know, uh, you can give a clinical report on it. Right, so the same technique has been used here. The patient came with the duodenal tumor. Okay, after the follow-up of oncology, uh, we did a routine, uh, again, a routine contrast study for this patient, right? So at the level, uh, at the stomach, when you put it, this is a SAG image, okay? This is uh, material uh, <coughs> decomposition, iodine image, again, uh, suppressing the water. So uh, iodine has a high peak uh, energy, so uh, kind of uh, at the lower energy levels. So that's the reason the outline of the stomach is the sag. You are able to see the iodine uh, uh, perfusion uh, or the presence of the iodine in the wall of the stomach. But as you go through the posterior end of the stomach, you see the uh, it's not well perfused, right? 
so you see at a lower perfused area. So uh, this are the ones, uh, another example of how we can show, make use of uh, uh, this uh, kind of uh, images over here. Right. Again, so as I told you, G is the only vendor where we use uh, gemstone spectral imaging uh, for uh, evaluating the myocardial uh, perfusion cardiac study. So uh, the technique remains the same as we see, uh, as we saw in the, uh, the pulmonary angiogram. Uh, of course, the protocol of performing this uh, particular study may vary, but uh, the evaluation remains the same. Here we see the LAD being occluded. Right, and you of course uh, because of the occlusion, you see the uh, uh, perfusion defect over here, which is put in the color uh, only. Right, so even this is a cross-sectional um, myocardial wall where you see it again. I was talking about this particular R uh, color values, where the blue indicates the less perfused area, and the red indicates the, the high perfused area, and the yellow or the green can be a normal considered as a normal. So this particular area where you can see, or uh, yeah, there are multiple areas here as well, where you see the low perfused uh, uh, area or, the, or because of the blood supply, right? So uh, this patient had come with, uh, uh, you know, uh, came with a stent again, uh, post uh, surgery. So we were, we were able to scan him again, and this is the stent which we, uh, uh, placed at the LEDs, and here you can clearly visualize the stent with the lumen inside, thereby eliminating all the beam hardening artifact. How we did it, you know, the, the same technique applied as what we saw in the posterior force of the brain, increase the KEV uh, technique there, the same, thereby you reduce, uh, uh, you know, the beam hardening that is caused due to the stent uh, uh, in the situ. Right, this is a, again a unique uh, <clears throat> uh, tool which we have, right? This is a plaque, uh, plaque com material composition or the characterization here. We see uh, deposits of uh, cal uh, calcified uh, uh, plaque over there and uh, you see a kind of a small, uh, this is a uh, plaque ID, which is a unique tool in GE. Again, the most of the GE users are well aware of this kind of a tool. Uh, to simplify it, let me tell you the green is a normal lumen uh, supply where the lumen you are able to see it. The yellow is a high density, that's where uh, this uh, calcium is seen there. And the pink uh, the shows that uh, it's, it's telling that there's a presence of a soft plaque. Now, this is a color based image, right? Based on the HUL. What if, if I can quantify it and tell what, uh, let me see, like, uh, let me be assured is it, uh, is it soft plaque or not? How do I do that? Uh, simply, I'm going to place ROAs, okay, using the spectral curl, the curve, I'm going to define uh, what kind of a plaque is this, right? The first I placed it at the calcium, you see the enhancement there at the lower KEV. And next I placed it at the lumen, okay, presence of iodine, it's again making it uh, go higher at the lower KEV. And then I put it in one area where the soft plaque was seen. You see the, uh, you know, uh, a vast difference there. Again, a more downfall of the image. So this will show you the, the grass spectral curves here will help you define what kind of a plaque is it, whether it's a softy plaque or uh, if it is kind of a fatty plaque, if the curve going to fall uh, the other way. Okay, so I have the last example to show you the clinical example of where, uh, how the uh, spectral energy is going to help you, that is uh, metal artifact reduction. Okay. Uh, there, uh, you see the conventional image over here, which is done with the 140 kvp image, right? You see a lot of artifacts and street artifacts, thereby it is uh, excluding uh, all the, uh, you know, subsequent structures around, right? The, when, we, when I convert this into mono energy level with the with the application of the MAR, that is a MAR material, uh, metal artifact reduction, I see there's no uh, <clears throat> streak artifacts or the metal artifacts whatsoever. This software or this kind of a technique enables me to see the bone of the metal interface uh, more clearly and more specifically, right? 
So this is a bipolar uh, prosthesis which you see. And this is another example of a metal implant. Uh, of course, most of our uh, most of you guys are uh, experienced with this kind of an image, which on the left side. But with the use of spectral imaging, where the uh, you know uh, merging that with the mar, this is what we get. Absolutely, you can see the tip of the screw at what level it has been screwed inside the probe, right? The axial images again. You see the loss of uh, data here or the detailing here, but in GSMR, that's not a word to be taken, right? Okay, this is the last example again for the metal artifact creation. This is a very kind of a Unix uh, data which I wanted to tell you. Uh, we do have in G, we do have a metal artifact reduction in uh, a conventional CD, but the speciality of uh, GSI with the combination of metal artifact will explain you this last image. Of course, this is uh, 140K. We where we don't see artifact here in the uh, in the clipping, and this is the clipping. And this is the iodine map image uh, where the water has been suppressed. But in the map, uh, the color layout, you see. The coil has been completely split up in the sense you are able to see the aneurysm with the iodine residue inside, right? There's no artifacts, there's no overlapping of uh, any kind of uh, uh, misregistration in this particular image. Thereby, the, your physician will be able to tell you like how the patency of that particular uh, vessel uh, which is inside the coil, right? Which is a very unique tool. Uh, which is uh, not possible with uh, any of, of the um, uh, machines in the market, right? So, uh, thereby, we'll, uh, we'll see what we did today for uh, the concluding. So, we'll firstly see what is the uh, benefits which we observed in the entire uh, slides. First is the dose neutral. I told you there is uh, no increment of the dose. Whatsoever, if you are using a dose uh, GSI mode, when you compare it with the other vendors where they use a high a high uh, dose factors, right? So we I tend to call it as a dose neutrality here, or the dose neutral, right? Yes, material based images help you to identify and characterize lesion better than a single energy CT, right? And the specific uh, specificity or the sensitivity of the lesion detection is improvised. Uh, uh, with the spectral CT, I know how, how, how do you do that with a monochromatic and a material based uh, images with a combination. You will have to work on with a different combination and check uh, you get the uh, good in uh, output of the uh, of the images. Of course, you're using a higher in concentration. You can uh, classify small lesions, right? Spectral head shift curves, yes, uh, which will show you a different uh, <coughs> energies. Uh, tissue response to that particular energy. I told you that we have a vast variety of energies varying from 40 to uh, 140. Each energy level, you can quantify it and see what uh, what is the enhancement of that particular uh, uh, tissue or the lesion at, uh, at a defined point of uh, uh, what, uh, the energies, right? Next, as I told you, the turnover, the game changer, spectral GSI, Cardiac CT is only possible with the, the GE, and, uh, and that will eliminate all the, it will give you a calcium free coronaries, and uh, you can study about the morphological and the uh, functional, okay, and with the hemodynamic circumstances. And of course, as I told you, GSA is applicable for all the parts of the body, okay. A uh, few vendors are not able to give a cardiac scan, as I told you before, but we here, we can scan the entire human body from the head to the toes with the GSI. Okay, with that, I should tell you, we have a dose neutrality, so don't worry about uh, the dose uh, which is given to the patient. It's gonna be as same as a conventional CT. And of course, we are going to use a wide FOV, which is of 50 centimeters uh, field of view. Okay, so there you thereby you will be able to see skin to skin details very clearly. Right. So summary of what all we saw thus uh, uh, in this particular presentation of the webinar, which you, which we see, we saw 
uh, we we understood to obtain a uh, spectral imaging, we need a completely matched projection of a low KV and the high KV technique, right? The result of both the uh, uh, energies. Next, we understood uh, for all the approaches in the market, fast KV is, uh, uh, you know, gives you a perfectly uh, uh, registration uh, acquisition techniques, right? Now, because of the perfect acquisition and uh, because of the uh, uh, unique detector which we use it, so for that will enable us in a better energy separation with you compare uh, with the other uh, uh, guys. So, uh, uh, of course, uh, low mono energy, mono energy tickets. This is a highlight there where you will able to see the iron map very clearly. Uh, in case of uh, smaller lesions or in case of uh, angiographies, if you are giving the low contrast uh, uh, volume, right? And material suppression, as I told you, we have a quality of a base pair, like a number of, n number of uh, base uh, uh, materials. If you know the values, you can personally, you know, you can ask us to uh, enter the values there, thereby you can suppress the details there. And all these values you get it by uh, uh, NSIT and uh, 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 they, they, they give you the values of uh, what is attenuation value of a particular uh, uh, material, right? Now, GSA, MSI, I told you there's a virtual non-contrast. Uh, I hope you know what is a, a VNC image right now. It's not just a, a water-based image suppressing iodine, but uh, we use a, uh, you know, the unique algorithm to generate a VNC image, right? Effective Z, of course, you can characterize uh, one or more uh, material using the histograms, as I told you, and uh, the metal artifact reduction, uh, where uh, you can, uh, you know, uh, interface the bone, the metal and the bone interface can be uh, appreciated very clearly, as you saw in the clinic. Right, that's it from now from me. And uh, let me see if we got uh, uh, any questions down there to so that I can be to answer you guys. Okay, what is the difference between the dual energy CT and the spectral energy CT, right? So, uh, <clears throat> dual energy CT is nothing but the technique that we use it like, uh, uh, you know, uh, with the low, uh, with exposing that, say like if you're exposing a tissue A with the lower energy as well as the higher energy. Okay, that's what we see, uh, that is the technique of uh, dual energy. But uh, of course that will help you in, uh, you know, does not characterize the material, but it will give a ratio. But when you compare it with the spectral CT, it was going to, uh, it, it just not tell you what is inside the, uh, you know, what is the density of the voxel, but it will tell you what is uh, uh, inside the, vo the voxel based on the attenuation factors. That's what uh, I put it into uh, different groups, like I told you, like uh, how to use a spectral, like uh, for example, in the monochromatic and material density way or the atomic Z effect or the virtual non contrastic as well. I hope that answers for you. And uh, why water HE value is always taken as a zero always? This is because to nullify the technique difference, uh, which we tend to occur it, right? So for example, you use a different KVP techniques as I told you in the earlier slides from uh, say like um, 80 to 140 KV. So there will be a lot of technique differences, but water doesn't change. So we uh, use the water reference value uh, to nullify the data. Okay, what is dose neutral in fast KVP switching? Right, uh, as I told you, like uh, we have the fastest uh, rotation time, right? We go about in a fastest pitch as well. Uh, so we, as I told you, G uses a fast KVP switching with a very, with a very minimum of a delay of 0.25 milliseconds, which is almost zero. 
so what there's multiple times the fluctuate happens in one particular uh, you know the 360 degree rotation uh, that will not be hence we are able to acquire that image in that particular respected time where a conventional ct does so uh, we tend not to use go for a higher radiation or we may not uh, we may not require a higher uh, uh, radiation of uh, or you know to acquire the gem gemstone spectral imaging so uh, that's the reason we we always say that is a dose neutrality when we compare with the uh, other vendors so we don't go for a higher uh, dose which will, uh, of course uh, uh, that will surely affect the patient so uh, we don't uh, tend to give a, a higher dose to the patient but instead we're giving the same amount of dose we take of the of vast detail as i uh, as we discussed right let me take the last uh, question due to the uh, the time we have uh, what we should do to decrease the metal implant artifact i told you which uh, gsi is uh, Firstly, it is a uh, you can uh, characterize using the uh, monochromatic uh, energy values, right? So that is a method or uh, one of the method uh, you can say if you increase the KEV levels of uh, monochromatic image, thereby it will it will reduce some amount of uh, uh, the metal artifact, the street artifact. Of course, you have metal artifact protection software that will enable you to completely take over the any kind of uh, uh, beam hardening or the streak artifacts uh, around the implant and thereby give you uh, and give you a good, nice quality images as i showed you the uh, bipolar hair prosthesis case as well as the uh, <clears throat> uh, the spine uh, implant cases and yeah not to forget uh, the aneurysm clipping so uh, this is how uh, it will never it will never uh, uh, allow you uh, th th uh, that will gather up all the data together and uh, uh, the, the data there will be no loss of data uh, uh, in case if you are using a metal artifact uh, reduction due to the streak artifacts okay thank you very much uh, everyone for uh, sparing this uh, hour for me and i hope this uh, session was uh, really beneficial for you and uh, those who are working already in the G uh, spectral uh, cities uh, please uh, uh, apply this uh, kind of techniques there uh, to provide, you know, we can get a lot of details there. Uh, thank